uh, YouTube viewers, uh, Tom Matthews uh, from Matthews Engineering here. I wanted to share uh, my latest project that I've been working on. Um, I've got this uh, mighty Freeport uh, grinder. It's a manual uh, surface grinder. I've had it for a while. It's actually a pretty good unit. Uh, it's a Chinese made unit, but it does have um, uh, ball bearing ways and it's, it's pretty accurate, uh, but it's manual. Um, and uh, so I wanted to kind of upgrade it and I've been trying to upgrade my you know grinding skills in general but uh, one of the first things I did uh, was add uh, add this um, uh, DRO to it that has uh, it's a three axis DRO these are out of China now you can get these for about um, uh, two hundred and seventy five dollars or so for a five micron uh, accuracy. I paid an extra hundred dollars and got one micron scale. So for a grinder, especially on the Z axis, it's very helpful. Uh, it gives you a, a micron resolution, which is about 40 millionths of an inch, uh, uh, which is what you need on a grinder Z axis. It's gross overkill for the X and Y axis, but what the hell, it was only a hundred bucks extra to upgrade. Um, but I've always wanted to automate the grinder. Anybody that's done grinding knows that it can get tedious, um, especially if you want to do a good job. Grinding can be tedious because if you get in a hurry or do something hastily on a grinder, uh, you you get poor results or you'll overgrind. Uh, uh, so one nice thing about computer control is you can pro, you know program in patience and and it'll do it exactly the way you wanted it while you. Uh, you know, sip coffee or do something else, and uh, and uh, so computer control is is really attractive. The problem is a computerized grinder, a good one, you know, is fifty to a hundred thousand dollars or even more, um, and I didn't want to spend that kind of money. But um, I did think uh, I'd like to try um, uh, to automate the one that I've got here. And um, I originally looked at Mach 3, and a lot of people using Mach 3 controllers is very good stuff. But I don't like the fact that Mach 3 is kind of a, it seems like the development of Mach 3 software is kind of reaching an end. And I didn't want to dedicate a PC to this machine. One problem with having PCs running a, a machine is that, um, you know, you, you have to maintain the PC, you have to upgrade the operating system, you have to keep it, you know, virus, uh, protected from viruses, and uh, so I really wanted a dedicated uh, system, and um, so I found uh, this uh, DD uh, CSV 2.1 controller, which is, uh, is this guy right here. It's the little, this little plug-in here is a little tiny box about, you know, five inches by four inches by two inches deep. Um, to automate this whole grinder and uh, now I put it in this bigger case that poly case I'm going to show you later what's in there but uh, you need more than just this controller but the software and all the brains are in here and it's quite good it's amazingly good um, it's pretty new so there's some uh, you know uh, beta type bugs with it but there's a very vibrant uh, support community and uh, so far I've been able to find workarounds or get get about everything that I want to work with it. Um, so um, uh, so what did I have to do uh, to get this to work? So uh, this mill or this uh, this grinder already had it already had this VFD. I had put that in there a long time ago. So that controls the spindle. Um, let you turn the spindle on and off. But the neat thing about a VFD is you can also send it external commands. So uh, I've got it also got it wired to the DD uh, CSV 2.1, and so it can it too can turn the spindle on. It's either doing that through um, you can either do it manually from the panel the way I did it there, or you can send an M3 command from G code and an M5 to turn the spindle off. So uh, not only can I control all three axes now, um, I can control the spindle on and off. Um, there's some extra M codes available too if you want to turn coolant on and off or compressed air on and off. I didn't wire those up, but the, the ports are there if I wanted to do that, uh, that's possible. So. Um, uh, Let's look at, um, uh, okay, so what did that thing cost? That DDCSV 
2.1 is about $275 with free shipping. Amazing. Now you do need a little more than that to get this working. Um, this is a stepper motor system. So I bought uh, three stepper motors, uh, 1600 ounce inches um, for this machine. And uh, that came with uh, the three steppers, NEMA 34 steppers with um, uh, controller and 60 volt power supplies uh, was about $400 with free shipping. So I just basic hardware here to get this thing automated, I've got under $1,000 into it. Now I did uh, have to do a lot of wiring. There's a lot of sweat equity went into this. Um, and there was, you know, you had to buy connectors and things. So, uh, but $1,000 total is not an unrealistic target. Uh, um, now let me show you a little bit uh, so all the axes have the NEMA 34 steppers, probably a little bit of overkill here, but uh, you don't want underkill if you're doing a, you don't want a stepping motor to stall. They are stepping motors, so there is backlash here. Um, if you have uh, ball screws on your machine, uh, you'll have less trouble with backlash. But on a surface grinder, remember that the uh, accuracy of the X and Y position uh, is often not that important if it's you know off by a very small amount. Uh, of course, the z-axis on a surface grinder is the one that what everybody cares about, and I can control this z-axis down uh, to a, a, a ten thousandth of an inch uh, very repeatedly uh, with this controller. So I'm delighted with it, uh, and it's going to help me automate uh, some tedious uh, surface grinding application. So each of the axes has a. Uh, NEMA 34 stepper. I used XL type track belt uh, and these so you can get the XL style pulleys on eBay. Um, I got the belts from Automation Direct. Uh, well, I think there's belts on eBay too. Um, and uh, now I did have to make all of these brackets and all these mounting systems for the, the Z axis, the Y axis, and the uh, X axis. Um, the X, I did some special work on the X. Um, there's a gear down pulley because the X moves pretty abruptly and you want to make sure the X is the only axis on a surface grinder that's probably going to have some load or some kickback from the grinding action so it's geared down so there would be a lot of authority uh, to move the X without slip. But I also put uh, shoulder bolts in here so that I can disengage the X axis and there's a, ball, a bearing in here too so that you can still use the grinder manually if you want to. That was one of my requirements is in automating this, I still want the ability to revert to manual operation or to do hybrid part manual, part automatic. Okay, so let's look at a little bit of what, um, what this controller can do. Uh, so first of all, we'll show some close-ups of this. Here's the X motion. And this controller has very nice, um, you can get in there and can tell it what accelerations you want. Now one problem with a surface grinder is all the three axes have very different turns ratios. And so you need to be able to control, uh, you know, the pulse equivalent on each axis and the turns ratio on each axis. Here's the, there's the Y axis motion. And then of course the uh, Z axis motion. Now one thing on this surface grinder, it takes, in order to raise the head by an inch, it takes 40 cranks up here. And so, uh, boy, that's tedious. The beautiful thing about this is with it under this control, I can raise it very quickly. You can see it there going up real fast or coming down real fast. Um, so really a nice thing. The next thing here, if I change modes to, um, it's got a step mode if you want to, just push a button and have it go a tenth of an inch, you can do that. Uh, but uh, the other nice thing is that it's got a very high quality uh, manual pulse generator. They call this an MPG or a hand wheel. And um, so it's got 1, 10, and 100x uh, resolution. But any of the three axes, this is actually a four axis controller. I'm only using three of the four. But like if I want to uh, control the X axis. I can manually control that now. Uh, same thing with the Y. 
so I could really could run the whole service grinder manually from this. But the particularly nice thing, remember I said that it took 40 turns per inch on that Z. If I want to run the Z up quickly, I can do it very quickly without you know getting exhausted turning that crank. So a very nice, uh, well done system in, indeed. Let me, uh, I'm going to show you a quick program run. And this is just a simple program that's going to move all three axes under G code. Um, and the G code will also turn the spindle on. I'm going to turn that off because it makes a lot of noise and I think you want to see that. See, you've already seen that the spindle can be controlled. Um, but what we want to see is see it uh, control motion here. And I'm going to put it in a little bit better setup here for to do that real quick here. Move that over and put the Y a little bit back to where it was. All right. And it has um, it has several coordinate systems the way any CNC machine would. Um, just for fun, even though the this DRO is independent of that uh, CNC, I still have found that very useful to, you know, for proving that this is working right. Um, let's go ahead and run a simple program here. Uh, this is just going to move all three axes here. I'll get out of the way. So it's going to take the Z axis up one inch, and then it should come down one inch. And then the, uh, I think the X axis is next. X axis should go to the 10 inches over, 10 inches back, and now the Y axis go, will go 2 inches over and 2 inches back. And now those will, I did say there's backlash in here, most all those axes return back to within a thousandth of an inch of where they are. Uh, and the Z axis is even more accurate. If I zero those here so that it's in the exact backlash condition and run it again, it'll be much less than a thousandth of an inch. There is a, an accommodation for backlash correction in the DD CSV 2.1. Um, I haven't tinkered with it much yet, so I'm not ready to report on that. Um, that controller will also do GO2 and GO3. It'll do circular interpolation. I don't know that I would ever need that on a grinder. But, uh, and, and you'd probably get best results with that with a ball, machine with ball screws. But uh, you know, my report so far is that this is a fabulous controller for the price. A lot of bang for the buck. Um, let's see here, what else should I mention? Um, they have uh, Dose Done is the, is the uh, there's a bulletin board by a company called Dose Done. This is called Digital Dream CNC. Um, and then this website on here is uh, www.nvcnc.net. Um, but the, the support on the bulletin board has been good. I can tell it's a pretty new product, and I suspect that I probably have uh, taken this farther than most of their customers. I, I've seen a lot of people demo, you know, just the controller with one stepper, you know, making it go back and forth. But I don't think, I think I may be one of the earliest people to do a full install. Um, so there are some quirks in the software. Uh, the good thing is they push out new updates. You can update the controller. Uh, there's a spot for a USB stick in here where you bring programs in, but you can also update the whole thing, which is pretty neat. Um, what else did I want to mention? Um, that's it. I'm going to do, uh, let me, I'll add something on the video here. I'll show you what's in this case. Uh, to make it work and show a little bit more around here. Uh, one other thing I had to do is I, it's probably not mandatory, but I wired limit switches. So all these axes have limit switches um, so that if you had a runaway program, it would stop uh, before it you know, ran off the end of the limit. Um, I think it's a good idea to do that and I recommend it. But uh, let me show you, now I'll show you what's inside the case over there. <laughs> 